Hey guys, this is an updated version of how to convert your RPG Maker MV project with Intel XTK. I will be using revision 3400, so any information on this guide is subject to change just like the other one. Also, I will not be recording any loading or uploading times. They may depend on your internet connection and the specs of your computer, but I will break it down as simple as I can. Step 1. Make sure that you have the latest version of Intel XTK, or at least the version that I'm running. Go to Intel XTK's website, click on Download for Windows, you want to save or open and install this file. Step 2. Open up XTK and log in. Check in the box to remember your credentials and start a new blank project by clicking on Templates, Blank, HTML5 plus Cordova, and continue at the bottom. Enter a name for your project. Click Create. If you don't see the www folder right away, on the left side click on the Minimize button next to Web Services. You should be able to see it here. Right click on the www and click on show in explorer. And there it is. Step 3. Go to RPG Maker MV, go to file, click deployment. Select Android, and you want to check in exclude unused files. That's a great feature that they added in the newer version. Select a place, and go ahead and export. Once you export it, go ahead and open it within Windows Explorer. Find the www folder, right click and click copy. Go to your XDK folder, the one that you just opened previously, delete the www folder, and then paste. So you should have your project file now in the Intel XDK folder. Go back to Intel XDK and click on Emulate. We're just testing to see if RPG Maker actually exported your project correctly. Don't forget, just because it runs an emulation doesn't mean that it's going to run on your device. Step 4. Go to Projects at the very top, select the project in question, and then expand out build settings. Although most of this stuff is pretty much the same, there are two or three different things that are a little bit different, but let's go and start filling this out. The app ID is something that's going to be a unique identifier for the Play Store and any other store that you upload your game into. I like to use com.myname.thegames name. The app name is going to be the name of the application that will show up on your device. I don't really need to tell you what an app description is or the author, make sure you fill those out. The app version is important for both you and the end user, not only for record keeping, but bug tracking as well. Make sure that you keep it in the same format, but change it every revision. Check in Cordova Android Whitelist. Scroll down a bit, and I usually like to check in full screen. That's really up to you. Step 4.5, the developer certificate. It might take some time to explain what this actually is, but in layman's terms, it's just a security feature. It does need to be filled out though. Check in the box, then click on Create New Developer Certificate. A key store is basically something that's tied to your application. In order to access your application and make edits, you need to have the correct key store. So you can't open the door if you don't have the right key. There is another reason why you need it, but I'm not really going to go into that. Let's fill this out together. The key store description is really for you. You can put anything you want. I usually like to put the key store for test 44, or the name of your app. Certificate alias is just a name for your key store, so give it a good name. KS4 test 44. A key passphrase is like a password, so give it a password. Retype your password. And I usually like to check in this box, this way I don't have to do too much work. Remember this password though, you're going to need it later. The rest is pretty self-explanatory, go ahead and fill that out. Click use this certificate as default, and then click save. The orientation is really up to you depending on your resolution, so go ahead and select whatever you want. The app version code is like a unique identifier. You always want to change this every time you make a new revision, otherwise it's not going to be accepted on the Play Store. For build settings, that's pretty much it. If you have any launch icons or anything like that, you want to check in the box right below it. Now if you want to do this, you need to make sure that you have matching images with the resolution shown below. You want to make sure that those images are also in your www folder. They cannot be anywhere else. Step 5. Click on Build at the very top, then click on Android. Click on the red lockbox icon, then click on Enter your passphrase. This is that password that we were using earlier. Select the duration for your passphrase. I usually like to check the lazier option, and then enter your password. Click on Lock. You'll now notice that that red icon is gone. Go ahead and click on Build. Give this a minute. Now that the build is complete, go ahead and download the application. Save this to your hard drive. Give it some time to download. 
go ahead and open up the file that it created and you'll notice that you have two files inside the zip folder. If you have a brand name phone, you most likely have an ARM processor. If you have an off-brand or like a custom device or a tablet or something, you probably have an x86 processor. And that's it. Once it's transferred to your device and you install it, just make sure you uncheck the box for installing from unknown sources. Everything should be working now. Now if it's not working though, leave me a comment and I'll see if I can troubleshoot it with you. See you around. Thank you for watching.